Let's face it, designing and developing video games is hard, but actually getting them to release state is even more difficult. But it's not impossible. As many of you know from the previous episode, I've been developing video games for just over three years, and I've learned a lot. And of course, I've made a lot of mistakes on the way. In this video, I want to talk to you about how I developed Finding Ice and how progress is going on redeveloping it. As you may already know, on the 29th of August 2022, I launched my first ever game to the Steam Marketplace, and it was met with low sales. Some may even say depressingly low. But I'm not one to accept defeat, so I'm working on fixing the game and relaunching it this year. Finding Ice tells the story of an Inuit attempting to reconnect with his father in the face of man-made global warming. I just want to say a really quick thank you to everyone who watched my last devlog. It means a lot to me to have all of your support and the feedback you gave me was so valuable and will help me to improve the game. One of the recommendations was that I tweak the colour of the wall so it was easier to see in the different environments of Finding Ice. As you can see, I've been working on changing the colour of the wolf, making it partly grey on top. Please let me know what you think of this new design. As I said, any feedback is so greatly appreciated. One thing I have to say to beginners is don't start your game dev journey wanting to develop the next GTA or Planet Coaster. Be realistic about what you're able to achieve with the resources you have. Chances are you don't have millions of dollars and hundreds of fellow devs working on the game, and therefore, you need to develop a project that is realistic for your skill set. It's much better that you slash your game idea in half, than release nothing because you kept it the same size it was originally. I drew a lot of inspiration from games such as The First Tree. I felt drawn towards the story, but also the striking visuals. I loved the way the fox contrasted with the monochrome colours of the surrounding environments. So much so, that I actually enrolled myself in one of the Game Dev Unlock courses. This enabled me to better understand how to create levels with beautiful colour schemes and palettes. I've redesigned level 1 of my game to have an autumnal theme. This is when the player is reconnecting the Inuit to his memories of the landscape and his father. This is all I can tell you at this point partly because I don't have it all figured out, but also because I don't want to give you any spoilers. As I said at the beginning of the video, developing a game is one thing, but actually launching it, well, that was the most daunting part for me. I had no idea how to launch a game to Steam, or even how to get wish lists, but now I do. I plan on making a video specifically about how to launch to Steam using Unity and Steamworks.net. During my game dev journey, I found it very difficult to find videos or even documentation that was easy to follow for launching to Steam. Although, this process has now been made easier with software such as ChatGPT. I should mention though, while it can seem super confusing to get your game on Steam, it's actually really simple and building the game to the platform takes less than 10 minutes. So no, it's really not as difficult as it first seems. I hate to ask, but only around 0.5% of my viewers are currently subscribed. Please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button if you want to see more game dev content and grow this channel to build a community of like-minded game devs and entrepreneurs. Once the rebuild is complete, I'm looking at launching to the Epic Games Store, Microsoft Store and the Itch.io Store. I also want to ensure Mac users can purchase my game, so this is something I'm working on doing for later this year. Stay tuned for updates on that. So to finish up this week's devlog, if I could make a game in a little over two years, anyone can. It takes determination and dedication to bring your ideas to life. But it's also important to be open to learning new things and conquering challenges one step at a time. The things you can do in as little as two months is honestly unbelievable. So just imagine what you can do in two years. See you at the next episode.